Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today I'm really excited to take a look at Bet Boom Nightfall's Gyrocopter. It's been a long time since I've seen a carry gyrocopter, and I'm glad it's back. I don't think carry gyrocopter is incredible. One of the reasons why I don't think it's incredible is its base damage. 52 base damage is really pathetic, and frankly is hard to last hit with. His item build is even somewhat optimized for damage, he even had to buy a quilling blade to get his damage up to 56 on creeps. However, let's not focus on the downsides of Gyro. What is good about Gyrocopter? We're gonna learn that in today's video and let's get into it. All right, before we get into the main part of the video, I do wanna let you guys know that I'm not only posting videos here on YouTube, I also frequently post videos on the website. If you don't know what I'm talking about, almost every single day I'm posting a new video to the Game League website. We're gonna teach you guys in depth about how to get to the next level. So if you wanna become absolutely broken and really take your game to the next level, I'm going to be able to help you because sometimes the guides on YouTube, there's either not enough of them, they're not specific, or they're just tier lists, which I know you guys love, but at the end of the day, the Game League website is gonna help you get to the next level. So click the link down below and sign up. All right, before we get into the video, I just wanna do an oversight of his item build, skill build, and talent build. Starting off with the item build, he went for circlet slippers with tangos, two branches, and quelling blade. This is to maximize stats and allow you to trade. After that, he went wraith pan, which I actually don't like very much. The reason why is Gyrocopter has really high base armor, so you don't really need the armor from Wraith Pan. You're only really buying it for 5 attack speed, I guess, and slot efficiency. But I'm a bigger fan of getting something like a Magic Wand or even Band of Elven Skin for later power treads, but that's what he decides to go nonetheless. From there, he goes Blades of Attack and upgrades his branches to Magic Wand, maximizing damage. This is partially a matchup thing. He's against Enigma, and he wants as much damage as possible to kill the Eidolons with Flak Cannon. From there, he completes this with a Falcon Blade. After Falcon Blade, he goes Boots, not obviously opting for early treads. I think once again, optimizing his damage for killing Eidolons. Also, the stats from Falcon Blade are really good with just Flak in general. Uh, even if you're just farming, it's good. From there, he goes back for the power treads to synergize with the base damage or flat damage from Falcon Blade into Crystallis, right? A little bit of crit and 32 damage, very solid item. And then he goes for Ag. So not completing the Daedalus, just a casual Crystallis into Aghanim Scepter. After Ags, he goes straight Satanic, trying to be a hard counter to Doom and to Black Hole, right? Because if he gets Black Hole and he gets Satanic off, the Flak Cannon Side Gunner from the Aghanim Scepter will heal him up, and that's the idea behind uh, Gyro being an Enigma counter. You can live through Black Hole with this combo of items, and you completely counter the hero in lane due to Flak against Eidolons. And finally, he upgrades his Daedalus, going back for a late BKB, uh, which I thought was pretty greedy, right? It's definitely a good BKB game, but yeah, he went it as late as humanly possible. I think a big part of that is Oracle. Oracle really enables that, because Oracle you know, can dispel the Enigma Q, it can save you from Doom, it can save you from, all right, Doom's damage, it can save you from Wind's Gleitnir magic damage, uh, from Alk bursting you in Radiance and so on, so it is really nice to have the Oracle that kind of lets him to delay the BKB, and finally he went a Swift Blink to get in position in the late fights. In terms of skill build, this is where things get weird. He goes for Flak Cannon, then Homing Missile. This is pretty normal, right? You're taking Flak for the Enigma Eidolons, then Homing Missile because it's a good laning ability. Back for Flak for the same reason as the first point, into Rocket Barrage, then Flak again, ulti, Flak again at 7, and then he starts skilling stats. And frankly, I don't really like it. I actually think that it is better to take Rocket Barrage, as this ability scales very well and does a ton of damage in the early fights. You might be arguing, oh, but Speed, if you're maxing Flak, why not take stats? Because you're getting six all stats, right? That is the trade-off. Six all stats are three points in Rocket Barrage. Six all stats for a little bit of reference is a crown and a circlet. But yeah, after taking stats, he will then go back for Homing Missile, taking his level 10 talent at uh, level 10, right? Going back for Homing Missile, ulti at 12, maxing Homing Missile, and eventually skilling Rocket Barrage. And finally, for the talents, he took 200 health at level 10, pretty normal. Three Flak Cannon attacks at 15, very, very normal. 40 flat cannon damage, which is a pretty cool talent. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I didn't even know Gyro had this talent. <laughs> I really didn't. Uh, but apparently you just can't get 40 damage on flat cannon attacks, which is very, very significant, especially let's say you're hitting three or four heroes. That's huge bonus damage, right? Huge. So 
pretty damn cool talents he's got at level 10, 15, and, and 20. All right, getting into the gameplay, there's only a couple things I'd like to say about the laning stage for Gyro that I think are particularly notable. Number one is your base attack time and base attack speed are so high that when denying, instead of just trying to literally deny at the right time, <laughs> As he misses the first CS, I'm sorry. <laughs> Instead of just straight up denying, what you can do is actually hit the deny twice. You hit so fast, it's kind of like Jug, it's the same thing as Jug. Your base attack time and speed is so high that you can hit twice to deny instead of just hitting. I'm not saying always do this mix and match between hitting at the proper time and twice, but basically, yeah, as I said, mix and match. From there, the nice thing about Gyro against Enigma, especially now more than ever, is Enigma has to sack a melee creep to make Eidolons. In the past, he could use it on range creeps, but no longer. This means that if he ever creates Eidolons near you, they're gonna be really close to you and easy to kill. Now, Miero on 9 pandas is better than this, so he doesn't give him that opportunity, but at all points, he's gonna look for Flak, and with the help of the Oracle, he's gonna look for any opportunity to use the Flak on the Eidolons, and this is what's so OP, because killing two Eidolons is more than a last hit. Killing three Eidolons is close to two last hits. It's that good. And so if you can get that value, I mean, it's twofold, right? Number one, you're rich. And number two, Enigma can't really play the lane. Like, Enigma as a base hero without Eidolons is very underwhelming, right? The stun is okay, but it's not great. It's, it's just all right. And so him not being able to really ever use Eidolons properly makes the lane incredibly easy. So the only change in specific that I think is really good for Gyrocopter in this patch are these back cams. I guess somewhat similar to a lot of the other heroes like Alchemist and maybe Medusa. Very good if you can have a hero that has like AoE damage essentially. Because when you come to these back camps, you can drag them together and by using cooldown and flat cannon, he can clear through them very, very quickly. It's incredibly efficient and a great opportunity to get ahead of your opponent. And from there, it's really just bouncing between these back camps and the lane, right? At this point, he's not looking to shut down the Enigma anymore. He's just spamming flat cannon carefully last hitting the remainder of the creeps, then coming back to the small camp and the medium camp here and flacking it out. And yeah, you can rinse repeat, do this over and over again. And if you get in a cult bracelet plus Falcon Blade, you will not really have mana problems, especially if you're efficient enough to swap to intreads. And so that's really why I don't get why he doesn't take Rocket Barrage. Flat Cannon doesn't really cost much mana at all. And so you have plenty of mana to use the ability. You just must think stats are good, which I really don't think they are. Either way, in team fights, your hero's not bad. The goal of Gyrocopter is to come in late and get a good cooldown. The problem with cooldown is if you try to lead with it, it often will miss. Leading with homing missile isn't bad, but as we'll see in this clip here, he drops a nice cooldown, gets a pretty solid flat cannon, which kills off the Eidolons, and does some really solid AoE damage to the enemy heroes, right? The Witch Doctor took half of his health just from the AoE of, of the Gyrocopter. But yeah, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, and this is how Nightfall gets really farmed. It's a very simple execution. The only adaptation he makes now is at minute 11, he sees a wave coming into the mid lane. And this is good because any double wave pushing into your tower will actually generally mean that the other wave is coming in behind. And so yeah, not only does he get to farm the first wave, he gets a second wave as well. And what's cool is, is this mid rotation also directly translates to him being allowed to farm ancients, right? Immediately he can start farming ancients with a flat cannon. Fortunately here, he had a double damage, which really makes it efficient, but over and over again, flak, 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 spam it out. It's just rinse repeat. Now in terms of showing up to fights, if you don't skill your Q, I wouldn't really recommend it. It's not that you do nothing. Uh, you're definitely pretty strong, especially with your level 10 talent. You're really, really tanky, but I'm not a huge fan of it. If you don't have Rocket Barrage, I would focus on the Ags timing and Nightfall would definitely agree with that, at least based on his gameplay, that you should focus on the Ags and primarily look to farm. The only exception to that in this game is at minute 13, he actually invades the jungle here. Obviously invading and taking stacks on Gyro makes sense because you can take the stacks, but it's of course a little bit risky. However, what's cool here is that instead of going to directly hit the heroes, he uses the flat cannon on the neutral creeps to actually deal massive AoE damage, nearly killing three heroes at the same time if it wasn't for the help of the Witch Doctor. Really, Witch Doctor put in work there against the flat cannon. It's pretty impressive. Now going into the mid game on his Ags and Crystallis timing, 
Really, uh, there's two things I want to say. Number one, you farm ancients like crazy, and ancients are really important on carry heroes that can farm them, because they give you way too much XP and a lot of gold as well. Also, he's willing to use cooldown to push out creep waves he doesn't feel comfortable farming. From there, it's really important you buy Morbid Mask, even if you're gonna go BKB, because you get low farming. Like, this hero doesn't have innate sustain, and its bad range basically means it will often tank the creeps. And so yeah, you kind of need this Morbid Mask almost ASAP, because otherwise, if you show up to a fight after farming, you're gonna be low HP and that could lose you a team fight. Now eventually he gets a satanic timing and this is when the hero becomes pretty nuts. I will say the problem with gyro carry, especially without rocket barrage, is you don't do almost any single target damage. Obviously you do some, but the main goal of the hero is to do spread damage, right? And you'll see in this clip here, just by hitting this Helmdom creep, he has 10 flat cannon attacks. 10! 10, 10 flat cannon attacks to start hitting the opponent. He completely wastes cooldown. <laughs> Okay, I think he was trying to cancel blinks and give vision, which is fair, but it was kind of a waste. Um, but yeah, this flat cannon is nuts. This level 10 talent, I don't remember it being this good. I don't know if it was buffed or not, but plus three seems really high. And really, no matter what you do when you're farming on this hero, just drag camps together. That truly is the key. That's the main thing that allows this guy to flash farm. No matter where he goes, especially on this map in 7.33, there's a lot of camps in different areas where you can drag camps together. Now at this point in the game, you really want to look to get Aegis because your hero is just insane. With Satanic and Aegis, you can't really die because usually if they want to kill you, they're going to have to burst you from full in your first life and then the Satanic will almost always save you on the second life. But as we see in this fight here, this is why Gyro can be strong. He can hold his ground and using the flat cannon, just kind of make sure that these supports in the backline get really low really fast and are then easy to clean up. Now this fight in particular, Nightfall goes crazy. At this point he also has the flat cannon damage talent at level 20, which I didn't even know he had. But uh, yeah, this fight he goes absolutely wild with 3200 HP as well as the Paladin Sword amping up the Satanic Heal and giving him more lifesteal. He's ready to go, right? Nightfall is in a position to slay. And so he takes the tier 2 in rapid fashion, very, very quickly. Uh, the Axe is just great at taking towers as well as this hero's low base attack time. And then yeah, the fight breaks out, clicks his flat cannon, does get stunned up here, right? But what he does well is he pops the Satanic early, which typically I'm not a huge fan of, but he does get a little bit low. And it purges the last tick of the Malefice, which I think was actually useful in this case. But look at the flat cannon go. He rips through the Witch Doctor and then rips through the Enigma because the Enigma was already low from the initial flat cannon. Unfortunately, Nine Pandas does a good job of kiting out the remainder of the fight, and so they weren't able to kill either core, but he at least forces out a BKB from the Alchemist. And from there, after winning a fight near the enemy's high ground, it's time to siege. And that's exactly what he does. With a little bit of heals from the Oracle and eventually lifesteal from Satanic and Paladin Sword, he's back to full and they get a tier 3. And finally, to end off the video, we have an Aegis teamfight here. He's picked up his Blink Dagger, which I love the choice, right? I love it because, yeah, the hero is a little bit kiteable. It's pretty slow considering it doesn't really want to buy major movement speed items. You know what I mean? None of the items benefit movement speed at all. It has no innate mobility, and so the Blink really helps out with this, but he just completely rips the Doom to shreds. And I will say, I think Nine Pandas plays this incredibly well. They get a good black hole off before the Satanic goes off. He wasn't able to use the flat cannon much at all. You can see the Ags going to work, <laughs> chipping away at the Witch Doctor as he casts Death Ward. And the flat cannon really does do a lot here and nearly takes out the Witch Doctor. He's pretty tanky on Witch Doctor. And he gets chain stunned down, but with the Blink Dagger, he's able to eventually clean up the Alchemist on the side. Gets maledicted, but that doesn't really matter. And they win the fight. So yeah, as I said, great fight from Nine Pandas. They played that expertly, but the Gyro... He's just tanky and he bought a lot of time. I'm not going to say he owned that fight. He didn't like dominate them or crush them. It was just, yeah, it was just good. And all right, that's going to be all for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, smash the like button. Subscribe to the channel. We really do appreciate it, right? We put a lot of effort into these videos. And so it would mean the world if you could support us just by commenting whatever, liking the video and, and subscribing to the channel. But all right, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.